you haven't figured it out already, uh, this is not going to be a hobby video. But for those of you who come here for that, don't worry. I'm back and that stuff is going to be coming back too. But just not this video. If you're a regular visitor to the channel, you'll have no doubt noticed that I've not uploaded in quite a while now. And if you combine that with the thumbnail and title of this video, the penny is probably going to drop as to why that might be. However, I'm not here today to explain my absence, uh, more to lend my voice to the broader discussion regarding mental health, its importance, its symptoms, and the things that you can do about it. The most widely discussed point about mental health is the need to talk about it. And so I feel that as a content creator, regardless of what niche you live in, if you have a platform of some kind, you kind of have a duty to talk about these sort of things every now and again. So here I am just hoping that you'll decide to give this one a chance, have a listen, and hopefully get something from it. I have to be honest, um, recording this, I'm pretty nervous. I don't, these days at least, I don't really like opening myself up too much in public forums. I kind of feel like I've been stung by that in the past, and I mostly like to keep myself to myself these days, except for people who get closer to me. But I'm going to do my best to get through it. I'm going to try to make the points that I want to make clearly, and hopefully it will be something worth listening to. Now, before we actually start rolling with this first topic, I want to make it clear I am not a medical professional. I can only talk about this subject from my own lens and my own experience. So most of the things that I'm going to suggest here will probably lead you down the route of speaking to medical professionals anyway, but I just wanted to make it clear that that's not the position I'm coming at this from, not with any authority, I'm mostly just trying to relate my own experience, provide some, rel some relatability through my own experience, and hopefully steer you in the same directions that have helped me, and hoping that they'll help you maybe. Identifying mental illness is often actually quite difficult. I'm on record more than a few times discussing the fact that I have ADHD. But ADHD isn't actually a mental health issue, it's a behavioural condition. However, that said, sufferers of ADHD are actually far more likely to experience symptoms of both anxiety and depression. Why is that? Well, it turns out that the specific symptoms of anxiety and depression are actually both parts of the broader spectrum of symptoms of ADHD. So whilst ADHD is a behavioural condition, it actually directly causes certain mental health conditions. So if you find yourself quick to anger, having mood swings of up and down, or just lacking in motivation, the first thing I really want to make clear is don't dismiss it. Don't just say to yourself that I'm having a bad day or a bad week or a bad month or whatever, because it could be a sign of a more serious and treatable underlying problem. In my case, towards the back end of last year, due to financial stress, social stress, the general rigours of being self-employed, problems that I was having with my house move... All of these things combined have meant that I've been slowly simmering up an anxiety disorder under the surface that I actually had no idea about. I didn't realise this was happening to me. And then around August of last year, I think, I started experiencing these little twinging sensations in my chest, often around the centre, sometimes to the left, sometimes to the right. Of course, my brain didn't equate this to anxiety. I mean, why would it? It's a physical symptom, right, in my chest. So instead, I was slowly subconsciously convincing myself that there might be something wrong with my heart. Now, I'll gloss over the specifics of why this was so scary for me, because I just, I don't want this video to be too heavy. It's very hard to discuss this subject without it being at least a bit heavy. But this all came to a head when one night I was just chilling on the sofa, minding my own business, watching a movie with my partner. I think we were watching the new Thor movie, the latest one. And then suddenly everything changed. I'd been getting these little twinging sensations most of the day on and off, you know, not constantly, just every now and again. I'd just be sat there and I'd sort of feel a little pinching sensation under my pec or around the centre of my chest. Um, but then I got one that felt a little bit stronger. And again, it still wasn't painful. It wasn't a pain. It was just, you know, a twinge, a poke. 
uh, but it was noticeably more intense than previously. And then suddenly I found myself breathing really shallow and really fast. Um, and I'm sat forward on the edge of the sofa, clutching my chest, um, feeling my heart racing incredibly fast. And in that moment, I was convinced that I was having a heart attack and that I was about to die. Um, it's genuinely the most terrifying thing that I've ever experienced in my life. And having a moment where you think your life is about to end is incredibly powerful um, and it really changes things. Fortunately for me, Jenny, my partner, is um, she's experienced with anxiety. She, she understands it as a condition. And, well, she's just a bit of a fucking legend. So she seemed to immediately recognise what was actually going on um, and immediately started sort of trying to calm me down and, and bring me back to level. Uh, but then we also called the emergency medical helpline, which is NHS 111 in this country. Uh, anyone who lives in England, you should know that number, 111. If you ever have a medical issue and you're not sure whether it's urgent or not or whether you need to go to hospital or whether it can wait, phoning 111 is the best way to find out. So we phoned the emergency medical service, um, the helpline, and they kind of felt like it was more likely a panic attack. But they did say, you know, you should probably go and see a doctor because, um, you know, they'll want to do tests and rule certain things out. Um, and just, you know, make sure that you are okay. So it's at this point in the story that we're actually going to slightly change topics now and we're going to talk about taking action, the importance of taking action. Um, I think my story so far explains pretty well how it can be very easy to overlook your mental health or like write it off as something else, whether that be for better or worse. Um, in my case, what I was writing it off as was actually far worse than a mental health condition. Uh, catastrophizing, which is also a symptom of anxiety. Uh, so at this point in the story, uh, Jenny and I were actually in the process of moving house. We had a place um, and we were waiting for our moving day. Um, and so, you know, we had all our belongings boxed, we were ready to go. And because of my <laughs> eternal undying neglect for myself, uh, I wasn't actually registered with the local doctor where we used to live um, in central Leicester. And so as a result of that, um, you know, we were about to move and I was like, well, there's no point in me going and registering with this doctor that's nearby. By the time they've even processed my application, we may well have moved house. But if not, then certainly by the time they've processed our application and I've got an appointment, we'll have definitely moved house. At which point, it's going to be like 40 minutes travel to get to this doctor. And I'm going to have to do it on a day where Jenny's off work because it's really hard to get to where we are now, to where we used to live, by bus or whatever. So I need Jenny because she's the driver of the family. Um, so I didn't. I, I hung on and I was still having panic attacks, uh, although they were, admittedly, they were all milder than the first one. The first one, I think, because I'd never experienced it before, was the most intense. Um, and I've only ever had one other since then that was nearing that intensity. Um, but once you know what they are, it does, it takes a little bit of the edge off, um, a little bit, not, you know, so yeah, long story short, I made the decision to delay addressing my mental health because of circumstances and a little bit of, you know, it was just too much bother based on everything else that was going on. Um, and this would prove to be a big mistake, um, because our house move actually got delayed by about two months. And it took a really long time to actually get moved. There were problems with the house. Um, I think I may have mentioned it on the channel once or twice, in fact, that there were, there were problems with the house that meant that it was taking longer to get moved. So I just want to take a quick sidebar here uh, while I'm in the middle of explaining this part of the story. Um, you might think that panic attacks are a thing that you just, you know, they start, you have them, and then they stop. Um, that's not the case panic attacks are incredibly debilitating as well as the feelings of impending doom and panic and the flight or fight sensation the sweating the heart racing all of the physical symptoms that go along with it there's also a thing called a panic hangover which 
can last anything up to a week. And my first one indeed lasted a week. During a panic hangover, you feel emotionally detached from the world. You feel unmotivated. But more importantly than anything else, you feel absolutely physically completely exhausted. Um, I was unable to get out of bed for the first couple of days. And then when I eventually did get out of bed, I was limited to sitting and watching TV and just trying not to have another panic attack, basically, just trying to keep my mind off it. So if somebody ever tells you that they've had a panic attack as an excuse for not doing a thing, please be gentle with them um, and, and, and try and help them because actually they're quite serious from a physical perspective. They're actually, they do actually harm you physically for the short term. So getting back on topic, um, eventually we did move house. As you can see, this is the new house. Uh, I've actually been working downstairs at the moment, so there's a little bit of mess that you might just be able to see off camera. I'm not working in my office at the moment, um, and so as a result, things are a little bit messier than they should be. But this is the new house. I've uh, been in here for a little while now. The last few videos have been done from the new office, albeit they were all, you know, quite a while ago now, which again, I apologise for. Um, but we're here, and within the first week or two of being here, I got registered with my new doctor. Now, I'm really lucky. Uh, I have an excellent GP. She is absolutely fantastic. She's taken my complaints very seriously, and she's worked with me to get treatment started very quickly, to get tests through as quickly as possible. Um, and that's really helped a lot. It actually turned out that as well as suffering from what was obviously a pretty serious anxiety disorder, um, I was also critically deficient in vitamin D, like extremely low to the point that she had to put me on a seven week course of the literal highest dose of vitamin D that can possibly be bought. And that wasn't the entirety of the problems. Uh, on top of this, she also diagnosed IBS, which is, again, it's a pretty common, pretty treatable illness. Um, but it actually, you know, it can be very uncomfortable to live with if not treated. And so it turned out that as well as this anxiety disorder, there was also two others for three in total, quite serious things wrong with me, that I'd just not addressed. I hadn't been to a doctor prior to this in years, literally years, because I'm the kind of person who, you know, 99% of the time, if you get sick, you know what's wrong and you know you're going to get better. And most things that you get sick with, you know, bed rest and hydration are usually the solution anyway. So... I hadn't been to the doctor for a really long time and it cost me. Um, I was leaving serious conditions untreated. The vitamin D thing, by the way, is actually no surprise. A lot of British people are slightly vitamin D deficient because we don't get a lot of sun over here. So actually just taking vitamin D supplements can be a great idea anyway. Um, but in my case, you know, I have an indoor job and all of my hobbies are indoor and winters in this country can be like six months long, you know, in terms of not getting any good bright sunshine. Um, so, you know, it's no surprise that I'm vitamin D deficient because I don't go nearly, I don't go outside nearly enough. So yeah, through this combination of, you know, ignorance, bad prioritizing, dilly dallying, etc. Um, it actually turned out I had three pretty important things wrong with me that needed to be treated. Um, and, and, you know, the most pressing of them obviously was the anxiety disorder, but there were also some physical conditions. Oh, by the way, for those of you who want continuity, um, I did have a blood test and an ECG, uh, and they ruled out there being any problems with my heart. So you're not going to lose me anytime soon, I hope. Uh, I don't want to jinx it by saying that, but I, I, I think I'm here to stay. Um, but the point being, I hope that this really adequately illustrates uh, just how easy it can be to overlook symptoms or to write symptoms off as something else um, and how easy it can be to overlook seeking treatment and thinking that that's not a priority. Um, there are often symptoms that don't feel like a mental health issue and it becomes very easy to dismiss it as a result of that. So I guess, yeah, the, the point I'm really trying to make is just if anything feels off, even only a little bit, just seek medical help. It's the safest thing to do. So my final topic here is where we're going to actually wrap up this little story of my journey with mental health. Um, and I do just want to take a second before we get into it to apologise if this video comes off as a little bit self-serving. Um, I don't really know of a way that I can explain the gravity of 
mental health situations without relating it to my own experience. That's just the only way I really know how to tell this story. So um, I don't want pity as a result of this video. Uh, that's not why I'm making it. I'm making it to try and help people. And uh, the takeaway should not be, oh, I feel really sorry for you. You've been going through so much shit. Um, I'm hoping that the takeaway will be, this has opened my eyes to how important it is to, to deal with these things. Uh, that's, that's what I want from this and, and that's what I'm hoping it gives. So um, yeah, we're gonna discuss treatment and help. Um, and I'm gonna do that by breaking it down into sort of three different types, if you will. Um, and the first of those would be social help. So, you know, if you have um, friends, family, loved ones, people you trust that you can talk to, uh, that would be social help. I'm really lucky, I guess, that I have people that I trust that I can talk to. And more than anything, talking to people, uh, the, the big help is just that it kind of gets it off your chest. Um, the sense of relief that you will feel as a result of just saying the words out loud is hugely beneficial. My sister actually happens to also suffer from anxiety. And recently, we've spent literal hours on the phone just trading war stories. And every time we both come away from those conversations, even though nothing's changed, just feeling a little bit better. Because when you get it off your chest and it's out there and it's, it's vocalized, it just, it has this effect of relieving pressure to a degree. And also, you know, when someone else is going through similar stuff and when you're trading war stories and they're sort of validating what you feel because they're saying, you know, yes, I feel that too. That's happening to me too. Uh, that's, it's a big deal. Um, and it really, really helps. So yeah, you know, whether it's a friend, a loved one, uh, a relative, whatever, um, if you have someone you trust, pick someone and, and just talk to them. It definitely seems scary at first, um, especially for people that feel like opening up is maybe a sign of some kind of weakness or frailty. I know that some people do feel that way uh, and it's a real shame that they do feel that way. Uh, then those people might struggle to talk to anyone about things. Um, but it, you know, it's the first step towards a better life. And if you can persuade yourself to, to take it, only good things can come from that. Now, next in my little list, there's professional help and treatment, which in terms of priority, I'd actually probably place highest. Um, but I know for a lot of people, they would never really get to the point of talking to a professional until they've spoken to, you know, a friend or someone, a trusted person first. And so that's why I've sort of done them in this order. Doctors, psychiatrists, therapists, they're all really amazing sources of help. Um, in the case of people that feel like they maybe have no one to talk to, a doctor, a therapist or a psychiatrist could be a, a literal lifesaver. There's not really anything to fear from talking to a professional. Their role in life, you know, their professional goal is to help people feel better. So anything that they say, do, recommend, it's all going to come from that place of wanting to try and help you feel better. In my case, however, I, I needed a pretty rapid and serious intervention because I was unable to function. Um, I couldn't work. I couldn't make videos. You know, as I said before, I was just sitting on the sofa watching TV or sleeping, uh, trying to just swallow down intrusive thoughts of impending doom. Um, but the, the very moment I opened up to my GP and started explaining what was going on, again, a huge weight was lifted because I'd just, I'd spoken about it to someone who I knew could help. Right, so this is actually where I'm gonna quite neatly segue into uh, my final category, drugs. Um, no, I'm not talking about skinning up a fatty and getting stoned off your tree to alleviate your problems. That, it definitely works for some people. It's very much not my scene. Um, I don't do anything like that these days. And so that wouldn't be my personal recommendation. Um, what I'm actually talking about is prescription medicine. Uh, in my case, anti-anxiety medicine, um, but also treatments for the physical conditions that had been uh, diagnosed during this process. So again, quick sidebar, sorry for all the distractions, but you see, it's not actually a massive leap that I had convinced myself I had a heart problem. It's actually not really that surprising. I was experiencing twinges and odd sensations in my chest, a feeling of pressure in my, in my chest and generally in my torso. Um, 
I often found that my breathing would go shallow and um, at night, especially, I seemed to sort of focus in on those symptoms, but, you know, they were there and they were real physical things happening to me. So it's pretty understandable, actually, how I thought that there was something wrong with my heart. But actually twinges, aches and pains, um, especially common in the joints, actually, but they can happen anywhere. Uh, those are often a symptom of low vitamin D, and my vitamin D was severely low, so obviously they were going to be pretty constant. Sensations of pressure and shallowness of breathing caused by bloatedness from IBS, um, not from anything heart-related, but until you know, until you've had these diagnoses, your brain is left to wonder, and the problem with anxiety is it's not a reasonable illness. The thing is, even once I knew that the physical symptoms were what were causing the mental problem, I'd still find myself panicky sometimes. I mean, even writing this script, because I was recalling a lot of this stuff, I had a couple of little flutters of panic. Um, there's no reasoning with anxiety. It will do what it wants to do. You are not in control of it. But that said, uh, with a combination of medicines for the physical ailments and anti-anxiety tablets, the last six or seven weeks, I've been rapidly improving. About six or seven weeks ago is when I started treatment and I was at rock bottom. I couldn't work. Um, and, and work is everything to me. I love my job. It, it's my identity. You know, painting miniatures is, is literally my life. It's all I do. Um, and to be unable to work, that's incredibly debilitating. And then to not be able to make videos and stuff as well, you know, it sucked. It really, really sucked. Um, but now, you know, seven weeks down the line, um, I'm starting to feel closer to normal again. I'm not better by any means, um, but I'm getting there. The, the anti-anxiety medicine itself sort of lowers your base level of anxiety. And the main thing it really does is it just keeps you on the right side of panic. You can still get pretty anxious and pretty worked up. I even still, you know, get short of breath sometimes because I'm getting worked up. Um, but it keeps you this side of having a panic attack. And that alone is just a huge help, that safety system. Uh, meanwhile, you know, the other medicines, they do a really good job of just helping to reduce the symptoms that trigger the anxiety. Uh, even though I now know what's wrong with me, I, like I said, you know, I'll still find myself going, oh, but what if it is a heart problem? You know, what if something's wrong? And those, those physical symptoms being reduced helps keep that at bay. So I guess, ultimately, um, I, I beg you, by all means, reach out to your friends. By all means, reach out to mental health professionals. But don't overlook your GP, because there could, much like there was for me, be something physical going on that's actually causing these mental health problems. If you're experiencing any problems, talk to your GP. And of course, for some of you, any of these recommendations that I've made so far are just, they're gonna feel like too much of a leap of faith because some people really aren't confident or comfortable reaching out to other people with their problems. Um, so what I'm gonna do is in the description of this video, I'm gonna try and get a few links together for places where you might be able to go from the comfort of your own keyboard and reach out without having to really, you know, feel like you're reaching out. Hopefully that can provide some help to those people. Most importantly, uh, as I sort of wrap up this video, which is probably going to be quite a long one by the look of it, uh, I want to make it really clear that you need to take care of yourselves and of the people you love. If it weren't for the support network that I have in my friends, my family, and most importantly, my partner, um, I really don't think I'd be alive right now. And that's no small thing. In fact, that's kind of everything. You only get one go at life, as far as I'm concerned, and it's really important to be able to experience life fully and to enjoy it and to be, at least as much as possible, to be happy and fulfilled. So, yeah, um, there's not going to be any call to action today, no youtuber -y stuff, um, just something real and something important from my heart to hopefully your ears. Love yourselves, people, um, and take care. The world is a very difficult and scary place. Um, but, you know, because we only get one go at living, um, we need to do our best to live. And, and that means 
if you're experiencing mental health problems and you're scared, uh, you're not alone and you can seek help and the help does work. It might take some time. You might have to go through it for a while, but eventually you will get better. So just reach out. Take care out there, folks. Bye-bye for now.